All right, cherubs, you should have read chapters four through six by now. So these chapters do quite a bit to characterize both Ruth and Kathy. They begin with some strange episodes where Ruth pretends to manage a stable of horses. Then she has an imaginary group of guards to protect Miss Geraldine. Then she has some lies about a pencil case that she purchased at the sales, but says it's a gift from Miss Geraldine. So what can we take from these little episodes in Ruth's life as related to us through the memory of Kathy H? That's a, that's a real question. Let me know if you have any ideas about that in the comments below. What can we learn about Ruth from these stories? For me, there are two interesting things. First is her ability to create these internal worlds. She's able to make up these rich stories with detail and imagination. Second, her imagination is infectious. Maybe I shouldn't be using the word infectious these days? But I think it's a good word to describe the stories that she makes up. She's the storyteller, and all these other people willingly live inside her fantasies, including Kathy. They pretend to ride her horses. They pretend to be a part of the secret guard. They marvel at her pencil case as proof that she is a favorite of Miss Geraldine. But at this point, we know that Miss Lucy thinks that the students aren't being taught enough about how the world really is, or about what they are. And at this point, you may also agree with that. We, as readers, are not being taught enough about how this world really is. We know that Tommy and Kathy and Ruth are living in this vague existence with lots of questions. There are a lot of unknowns here. And often when there are a bunch of unknowns, our imaginations fill in the blanks. And so these students are making up stories about their guardians and about the gallery and all of that. Ruth's are just the most convincing, or at least the most fun. She's the most capable myth-maker of the bunch. I mean, we all have the stories we tell ourselves about the world, and how we live in it, and why things are the way that they are, right? Like, most of history is just a story that we tell ourselves about the past. The problem here, though, is that Ruthie's fictions don't address those big questions we have about the world and how it works. Like, they're not stories about what Hail Sham is, or where they're from, or what their future holds. Her fantasies are more like distractions. They're irrelevant fictions that exist completely outside of their reality. Horses? Assassins? These things tell me nothing about the fictional world. They're knowingly false and disconnected. Not even an attempt to build a plausible or truthful story. And often those living inside these fantasies, like Kathy, know that they're false, but they play along. It kind of makes me wonder what kind of fantasies I live with. And Kathy buys into these stories every single time, even when she knows they're crap. She defends Ruth against Moira. She knows for a fact that Ruth is lying about the pencil case, and ultimately, she lets her do it. She encourages and defends these fantasies. Maybe because she thinks that they'll give comfort or confidence to her friend. Kathy, as she tells us in the first lines of the novel, is a carer. She takes care of people, and if the reality of their situation is too grim to look at directly, and if Ruth's way of dealing with that is to tell herself fictions about their existence, well, Kathy's going to enable it. She's going to let that happen. She's going to let her tell those stories if it gives her comfort. Which brings me to an interesting comparison between the two of them. Ruth would make a terrible carer, even if we're not quite sure what that means yet. When Kathy loses her beloved cassette tape, Ruth tries to give Kathy the same comfort that Kathy has always been able to provide Ruth, and she simply doesn't get it. She gets Kathy a new cassette tape that has nothing to do with the first. The thought is sweet, but she doesn't help Kathy live inside the fiction she's created for herself with that song. The story Kathy made up depended on the song itself, not the medium of the cassette. And that's the key difference between these two. Like, Kathy's fantasy, this one of holding a baby she didn't think she could have, that has nothing to do with the physical object of the cassette. So Kathy can enable the stories of Ruth, but it does not go the other way. Ruth cannot enable the fantasies of Kathy. Kathy can understand the stories that people tell themselves about themselves, and she helps guide those stories to allow them to be comforting. It's like her superpower. Ruth serves as her foil here to highlight that skill of Kathy's, and it's a big part of the reason I find Kathy so interesting. A quick reminder from your high school English class, a foil is a character whose presence highlights characteristics of another character by being that character's opposite in some regard. Anyway, let me know if you have any thoughts about these concepts in the comments. Where else have we seen Kathy take care of somebody and understand their stories? Where else have we seen Ruthie lie? Share below. The next episode will be about the end of part one. Thank you for watching. Oof, we gotta find reasons to get dressed up these days. Comment response videos are a pretty good excuse. So Mac Lott comments that he's finding the structure a little formulaic. 
that she will explain events from the past, from the future, rinse and repeat, is the way he phrased it. And yes, I think that the way Kathy explains events like that is a large part of, of why I like her as a narrator. And I don't want to give too much away, but the way that she explains things is that she will often give us something as a foregone conclusion and doesn't allow us to see the process of how it got to a certain point. And that allows us to be comforted and, and allows us to accept things in the novel that we wouldn't usually accept. Gregory Siefkis called attention to class in this novel, and I think that's, that's super important. And I, it's not something I addressed in either of these videos, but I do think that class is a big theme in, in this book. Like, Hailsham is a luxury option for these, these students. That's made clear. Um, but I think that class becomes more of an interesting topic as, as we get further along. And so I just want to highlight that now so that as we read, we can start to see allegories for class throughout this. Uh, Tan Newton calls attention to the fact that Kathy's something of an unreliable narrator, which is true. A lot of this novel is told from her memory, and memories are unreliable. So something like this comes up when her and Ruth are talking about the Miss Geraldine Guardian experience. In Ruth's memory, it lasts just a couple days or a week or something, but in Kathy's memory, it was a much longer experience. And so there's this, uh, there are competing truths here, and that's something interesting to call attention to. And Alex Danis calls attention to the fact that Kathy is absolutely accepting of this world, which, yeah, she's uh, that, that, that comfort that she gives us by being so comfortable with this world um, that we, we sort of adapt her perspective of it, and so we enter this dystopia totally accepting of these conditions. And so I think that in a lot of ways, she's caring for the reader in the same way that she's going to care for donors later on. And we'll learn about that in chapter seven.